This is Computer Science Discoveries Unit 3, and we're about halfway through uh, Lesson 13 with other forms of input. So I'm going to pick it up at level number 7, and now it's going to actually get into showing you what this mouse X and Y means. Okay, one way to take input is just make a sprite follow the user's mouse position. Okay, you can get the X and Y location of the mouse using world.mouseX for horizontal movement and the one right below it, world.mouseY for vertical. Okay, world is the name of the object, mouse X and Y are the properties. So here's what we have to do. We have to make a B sprite follow the mouse in that game area. So nothing is here for us except this draw loop. So the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is let's call this thing something simple and easy, B. In the animation, they probably already have one set up for us. We can double check. There it is, cool beans, okay. <clears throat> Whenever we have our draw loop make oops make sure your draw sprites in there so right now that's what we've got cool inside this draw loop set the x position of the sprite stop the x position or property of the sprite which is named b let it be the value of world dot mouse x in the world commands right here all right let's see what happens okay do you see what's happening? Okay, if I move my mouse up or down, nothing's happening. But left and right, here it is. And see how sloppy that is? Because I forgot to put my background inside the draw loop. Okay, so now B is flying around horizontally. You do the same thing with the dot Y value. Okay, so now I have to make it follow the Y property and set b.y as to the world mouse y property, and then it will follow all around, okay? You take care of that part. Get to level number eight. Now, and by the way, by this point, you should have the y property in there that says b, and we should have this property in here, okay? Run. So now, Wherever I move the cursor, this is where the bee is flying. Now what they want us to do, okay? Let's make the bee fly around where the mouse cursor is as shown in this picture on the right, okay? Now, gee, it looks like they have white in there, so I'm gonna pick blue, okay? So it looks a little pretty. Get more contrast this way. All right. <clears throat> we need to add a random number between negative 50 and 50 to the mouse x or y in other words we're going to add to this value okay so the x property is going to take the mouse's position and then add a random number between negative 50 to 50. now here's the deal you could go back and grab in the math command and grab add put that over here but see there's no spot right now if i try to put it in with the blocks it doesn't work so well so then let's do this let's add oops add okay and we're going to do the same thing to y add now i don't have anything designated there yet oh goodness sakes what did i just do Okay, put this back here. B dot x equals world dot mouse x. Okay, plus now, right now, if I just say a number on each of these, I should be able to turn my blocks back on again. And then what I really want here is inside this addition. We want to put random number instead of just one, okay? And it says between negative 50 to positive 50, okay? So come here, random number, negative 50, positive 50. Let's see what happens. It should look like this when we run it. 
Oh, yeah. Yikes. That's a bit much, I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> if necessary, they said we can use the frame rate to slow it down so that it's not so terribly obnoxious here to look at. So if we want, we could add the frame rate here to be, I don't know, 10. And you know, it runs 30 frames a second. So then this isn't quite as horrible to look at, right? Or that looks good. If you want some extra credit, that's 1B. Add three more that follow so it looks like a whole swarm. It's going to be a little much to look at, but there you go. Extra credit, right? All right. In nine, as we get here, <clears throat> this is make a prediction. Okay. So what I want you to do here, let me get back to what a student sees. So read this program, predict what you think is going to happen when you press each of the arrows up, down, left, or right. Okay. And you're going to type your prediction in here. What do you think this exclamation point means there? And how might you use different key press blocks when you get to programming a game? Hmm. So make your prediction, then you can hit the run command and see what's happening. Number 10, this is a quiz or a little matching thing. And specifically to get you to recognize there's a difference between key down and key went down. So read through these. Once you get those matched up, hit submit to check. If it isn't correct, fix it and try, try again. Okay, now at 11. It says key presses are great, but sometimes you want them to actually use a mouse and click to make some interaction or some, some different animation to occur. So now there's something called mouse down, okay, which is similar to the key down command, but it checks to see if you've clicked left. All right. Typically, we're always going to use the left one. A regular mouse, you also have the option for right clicking. Okay. If you just have a keypad <clears throat> or a trackpad that only has one button, then make sure you always pick the left one. Here's a program that drops a balloon down the screen. And what you are going to program is you're going to program the left mouse button to raise the balloon back up while it's clicked. Okay, so first let's see what's happening. See the balloon? So what we wanna do is have a way so that when we click, that balloon will raise back up. All right, so add an if else statement that checks for mouse down. So here's if else, put that there. By the way, if I had just grabbed the if statement, let me just show you. If you had just grabbed this and clicked on that plus button, it would give you the else there as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we need to check to see if mouse is down. So I got to go here inside my if mouse down. Okay. And it kind of defaults here to be the left mouse button. Okay. So it's there. If that happens, what we want is we want this balloon to go up one pixel if the mouse button is down. So this is going to be a change to the Y property for your balloon. Okay. Now what's happening here. You got to remember, I know you're thinking going up is adding, but remember this is a different grid and actually going up means your y value is getting smaller. So we need to subtract here. Subtract. Okay. I'm just going to type it balloon.y. And then it says we just want it to go up one at a time. So I'm going to put a one here. Okay. Now here's the trick. It says if the mouse is down, let's read these comments here. If the mouse is down like this, make it move up. That's the subtraction. Otherwise, move it down. So here in this blank spot, this is where we want to just drag this one. Okay, so if I hold the button down, it'll force the balloon to raise. And if I let go, it's going to start to sink again. Let's see and make sure it worked. 
Here it is. I'm going to hold the mouse button down. Ready? Go. Ah, it's going back up. I let go. It's going down. I press it down. It's going up. Sweetness. All right. <clears throat> so we moved that code. Da -da. Can you make the balloon drift randomly to the left and right as it rises and falls? Ooh, that would be kind of cool. Notice it says random. That's the only hint I'm going to give you. If you figure that out, bring it and show me. You get bonus points. All right, we're moving on into the bubble or level number 12. We learned that key went down and key went up. Can you be used to respond to just a single key press? All right. The same thing is going to be true with the blocks mouse went down or mouse went up. Okay. So it says, let's make a simple game that counts how many times you've clicked. Okay. Let me make sure I've got this set up properly here. So here's what's going to happen. Okay. We're going to track how many times we've clicked. We've already provided a variable clicks that you can use to track how many times it's, it's happened. So look here. Notice we're not using a sprite. This is just going to be how many clicks have we got. And see what's in the draw loop here? The white background, the text size is big, the text is going to basically count clicks here. Okay. Let's see. Add a conditional that checks if the mouse went down. Okay. We are going to add an if, and we're going to say, all right, if mouse went down. Okay. Not just holding it down, but that it actually clicked and went down. Okay. Then what we want it to do is take this variable and add one. Okay, now this is going to get a little tricky. So hold on, because we're so used to dealing with sprite properties, we haven't really done anything with just a variable. So let me show you how we've got to do this. Okay, add to the clicks variable. So I'm not going to redefine a variable that was already done up here. I just need this statement right here. And we're going to say, take the clicks variable, and we're going to say clicks plus one. All right, let's see what happens here. Are you ready? Now, right now, all I see there is zero because see, it initially was set with a value of zero. Now, what happens when I click? Oh, one. I'm going to click it three times in a row. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. Da, 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 da. Every time you click, it adds one to the variable. Notice this isn't about a property with movement like a sprite.x, a sprite.y, a sprite.rotation, a sprite.scale. All right. This is just a variable. And I wanted to make sure you saw this because when you go to design your game, you're going to have to tally points, and this is how you're going to do it. All right. So you, they define this variable. Here we go. Can you add a sprite that responds to mice or mouse went down as well? Add an image of your choice. Increase the sprite size every time the mouse is, mouse is clicked. That's extra credit. If you can do that, cool. Show me. But I definitely need to see 12 that you were able to make this work. All right. When you get to 13, ta-da. Let's take a look what they want us to do here. <clears throat> we can use a Boolean expression to check whether or not the mouse has moved. So now, holy cow, look at all this stuff. The mouse did move. Okay. So it's not just the position. It's that it actually moved. Okay. This block will return false if the mouse is still, but true if it's been moving. Right now, this program just displays the salt shaker. Okay. Nothing's happening. It's just there. You'll need to use mouse did move so you can shake the salt by moving the mouse back and forth. Add a conditional. All right. So we got to go here. Add a conditional. That says if mouse did move, so we got to go up here, mouse did move, Cha ting. okay? So if that happens, then what do we want it to do? 
If it's true, rotate the salt sprite randomly to the left or the right. Okay, now random. And I don't want it to move, I want it to rotate. Ding, ding, ding. So here's what's gonna happen. This is called salt. And we want the rotation to be random. Oh, wait now. And we want rotate it randomly left or right. Okay, well, let's see if this will do it. Notice my rotation right now, because it's kind of slanted, is 150 degrees. Normally, it's facing straight up. So this thing had to turn to get past 90, not quite to 180, which would be totally straight up and down, it's 150. So if my mouse moves, what I really wanna do is have this just move a little bit around that 150 rotation. So, I don't know, 140 to 10 below, 10 above 160. If you wanna try that. Let's see what this looks like. Run. So every time I move the mouse, see how it, and then it'll stop. I move it as it's shaking. Stop. There you go. Let's see what else it's asking us to do in level 13. Add a conditional check to that. If it's true, rotate the spot. Okay. Can you keep track of how many times it shakes the salt? And then rotate it right side up after 100 shakes. Ooh, cool. So then what I'm going to ask you to do is keep track by defining another variable like you did in 12. Keep a counter going, all right? And then when it gets to 100 or over, wink, wink, greater than 100, then you want it to, let's see here, after 100 shakes. So you're going to say when it's greater than 100, then you're going to change the rotation and go from there. See what you come up with. See what you want to share and show me. And as always, good luck, happy coding, and may the force be with you.